Alright, time for another draftphysics.com video presentation. So I'll make this a YouTube video and I'm going to have to direct people to this video, I guess. I'm looking, seeking some science-minded person, someone informed uh, in physics, uh, to make a counter-argument, to in some way show how what I'm going to say is not true, some element of it. Um, it seems quite clear, all right, that it, it was, there's been a long-standing proof against any notion that there's such a thing as kinetic energy in the form of one-half mv squared, uh, vis v uh, living force, as it was originally invented. So it is important, the history, that you understand it doesn't have a good history. It was invented by a guy who overtly said to physics, your physics is too atheist, okay. <laughs> Um, he didn't sell the point in his lifetime. It was later resurrected in the 1700s as show physics. They did a few experiments that in the 1800s they essentially debunked. So they proved mv squared as being what energy is. And then they changed it to one half mv squared when they devised a work equation that basically says work is force times distance when it's quite clear the evidence is kind of unavoidable that <laughs> work is how long a force is applied. That's all that matters. You apply 200 pounds for a half second or you apply 100 pounds for a full second, those two quantities of energy are the same. Um, Newton, Descartes, and Galileo are all correct in understanding its momentum that is energy. It is force. It's all the same stuff. Um, <clears throat> so the lever proves the case um, and, you know, there's nothing new here. There's nothing that couldn't have been argued 300 years ago, and it was, but it was ignored. And it's being ignored now. So I can overtly say, okay, the point's been made. It hasn't been in any way countered. And yet, how do you explain that physics won't change, that people won't change, that there's nobody saying, hey, you know, this is a good argument. Um, if you can't counter it, then it sh you know, should win its prize for being correct. And the fact is, levers aren't free energy devices. And by m one half mv squared, they are. Okay, it's just a fact that you can't evade that this formula means a lever creates free energy. Because wherever you put in one side, you can create more and more and more on the other side. Now, I demonstrated the function of the lever in another video. I'll just maybe show a clip of that. Um, it oscillates perfectly with a two mass at one location and a one mass twice the distance from the fulcrum. And it'll oscillate perfectly, meaning it's oscillating because the energy is basically flowing between the two sides. One side creates the energy that pushes the other side up into gravity. Gravity pushes it back down to equalize, and in that process gives the energy to the other side. And the energy is moves from one side to the other, and it's the same energy. Um, now, it's quite obvious that the two mass will have one velocity in the sense that it will oscillate a less than the one mass further out on the lever oscillates over a larger space in the same amount of time. So this one has twice the velocity of this one. So it's like a 5-ton train going 10 miles an hour and a 10-ton train going 5 miles an hour. The fact is, is you could use a lever to convert one into the other. That if we could make a big enough lever, it would be a simple task to just take the 10-ton train and put it uh, closer to the fulcrum, half the distance, and the 5-ton train just sit it twice as far out on the other side, and one will create the other. Um, It'll happen with this device right now. If I stop, if I have the lever oscillating and I put my finger in there to stop it, the two mass will leave with one velocity. And if I stop it on this side, the one mass will leave with twice the velocity. And it'll go four times higher into the gravity if that's what I'm doing. But that four times is only twice the time. It'll only go twice the time in gravity. And it has half the mass, and if you add those up, momentum says that works. It's the same energy on both sides. There's no room for any other form of energy or any other kind of energy or uh, you know any of this kinetic energy 
not so good stuff. Uh, the other example I've given to prove the case that this is all just about a misunderstanding of gravity. So in gravity, it, you know, velocity means you go through gravity faster. So in the first second of your motion forward up, you go three units of distance and you go one in the last second. But it's still only two seconds. This one just does the one unit in the one second. So it's four times more action in terms of distance but it doesn't mean anything because that distance is into a constant force. It's a constant rain. And it just matters how long you're in the constant rain. And the case is sort of proven by the flyby argument in gravity. It's the same amount of distance. And what you're really changing by increasing the velocity is the amount of exposure you'll have to the gravitational force. So the faster you go, the less gravity affects you because you're in it less time. So it's just about time. The real work equation okay, should be force times time. The time you apply the force is all that matters. Uh, again, 100 pounds for <coughs> one second, same as 200 pounds for a half second. Uh, in the example I did, I did a four to one ratio, meaning there's four times more energy on one side of the lever than there is on the other. It's just silly to say that um, you know, a quarter mass, um, four times the distance, <clears throat> I can have four of those to equal one of the one mass moving the less distance. I mean, a five-ton train going five miles an hour does not equal two ten-ton trains going five miles an hour. Five-ton train going ten, right? I said that right? Okay. <laughs> It's a silly idea that I could put two 10-ton trains going 5 miles an hour on one side of a tug-of-war rope and a 5-ton train going 10 miles an hour, and it would be a tie. Come on. So it's just, it's a it's mistake. Just like plus and minus, they got something wrong a long time ago, and there's a resistance to fixing it, but the evidence is decisive. There's no way to argue around it. Levers are not free energy devices. I cannot push... I cannot drop a two mass here, okay, and expect to get what the kinetic energy formula says over here. Because if I could expect it, if I could expect twice the energy to pop out of the other side, I'd have a free energy device that's as simple as a lever. And there's no such thing. It doesn't work. Actual facts say that doesn't happen, and it says this formula can't be correct because it doesn't happen, and it should, by your theory, by your formula. All right. Yeah, that's short and sweet. So, I mean, I, it's right here. It's right in front of us. There can't, there's no counter-argument been provided me in a year. I've been making this argument. There's nothing. And you're all just sitting there saying, mm -hmm, so what? So what? So a fundamental element of physics is wrong, and no one's going to fix it. No one cares. No one even cares to try to argue against the facts, to draw a lever and show how there can possibly be more energy on one side of the lever than there can be on the other side without having a free energy device. So I have made extensive other arguments proving the case, demonstrating that other experiments that are supposed to be showing some feature of this fake energy never really show the feature of the fake energy. Um, that they're all engineered to produce an outcome. They're not engineered to produce the truth. All right. Pause there. Nah, maybe I just play some of the video. Yeah, maybe I'll just do that. All right, so it's a lever with one mass four times the distance from the fulcrum of four mass. So you can sort of see. There's the one mass. There's the four mass. Uh, and they oscillate perfectly, demonstrating that in reality they're the same thing. That if you put a one mass four times the distance, giving it four times the velocity, four times the movement in the same time, that it will in fact have the same energy, not four times as much energy, just the same energy. Uh, so I guess we can play a little bit of the oscillation. Mm, I 
should be oscillating. <laughs> yeah, there it goes. All right. So, you know, it's four times the motion here for the one mass object, one quarter the motion for the four mass object, indicating those two quantities are exactly the same amount of energy. The same potential is created when they move against gravity. Um, the same release of energy, <coughs> you know, when they, uh, you know, are... Can, their, their energy is consumed fighting the gravity. Anyway, right, see if there's anything to add. All right, so an <clears throat> important point to make of how this is really important to physics is that it basically demonstrates that force, energy, momentum, weight, and there's another one, they're all the same thing. There's no difference. It's all the same stuff. It's all calculable as equalities. There's no distinction except in the form. You take a big object, you hit it with a force, the big object now contains the force and it can give away that amount of force and no more. That's all it has. The energy is in the universe already and it just moves from one object to another object to another object and it doesn't increase and it doesn't decrease and heat is just another form of momentum and you know again the weight argument is the important one to understand that you have a weight in gravity your weight shows on a scale it's the same as if you move something sideways against you know where gravity isn't pushing you you understand that you'll hit something with a pressure a pressure per square inch for an amount of time and that's essentially the force and gravity gives you that force by raining <laughs> at a constant rate and your mass just decides how much rain how big a bucket you will have and how much you can collect this is a really important um, change in um, how people understand not only gravity but they understand how energy moves through the universe it doesn't move in some silly way where it increases uh, because you increased velocity um, mass is just as important as the velocity and uh, it's, a, you know, <laughs> it's a really 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 it's probably more important than plus and minus being wrong this mistake is much bigger uh, and the the ch the change in the, uh, the just in the understanding of how it functions is just really important <sighs> And so prove it's not a conspiracy by making a counter argument or conceding this is a really important fact and physics needs to pay attention. <laughs> this is the big joke, right? I mean, yeah, there is. A, apparently there's a conspiracy of cowardice that physics for a long time has... They run from the debate. They run from the argument. That's what they did in the history. They just declared things. They didn't really allow there to be an argument about whether they were declaring something that was actually true or not. Again, when in the in the 1800s, you know, they just stuck a half in front of a formula they say they proved for over a hundred years. They did a bunch of experiments that proved m v squared, and then they stuck a half in front of it without any notice, without any fanfare, without any, hey, we're going to boldly undo all that evidence. We're going to debunk our own theory, substantially debunk it. <laughs> okay, and they did, wasn't, a, no New York headline, you know, you know no, no, it, it wasn't even news, you know. So just understand, it's a terrible history for this formula. It's just a contrivance. It's just out of a, an ignorant notion that because something moves more distance against gravity, that somehow you don't have to understand that, well, if it's half the mass and, and it's moving twice the velocity, that it's going through the gravity twice as fast. All right, anyway. So, um, more than twice as fast, four times as fast. Because of that extra velocity, it goes through a gigantic amount of distance and it only gets the same amount of gravitational it only gets as wet you know in the first three seconds <laughs> right in the first unit of time 
you go through the gravity. You go a much larger distance, but you're not going to get hit by more force. It's going to be exactly the same amount of forces in the tiny distance because it's just about you being in the rain and the rain hitting you. And that's just a timed equation. Just how long are you in the constant rain? I mean, I've said this so many times, and there's so many different ways you can say it. That wasn't the best. So, um, anyway, there is a video called The Lever Experiment um, on YouTube. Um, and it makes the case in substantial detail. And it should this, this conversation should just be about, oh, how do we make this change? There's an awful lot we have to fix. And you ought to get to it. Uh, you know. <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, it's not that you know. I, there's no point in talking about physics because these people don't. You don't want to accept when I'm right, and it's a fact, and it's undisputable, and it's you can't change it. And it, it's yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm right, but it's just a fact. And <laughs> there has to be a point when you would concede the point, and you concede. Wow, physics made a really big mistake. <laughs> really big and really obvious and really so simple that it's just almost crazy that none of you figured it out that somebody didn't stumble on the truth but they've talked around the truth for so long right first they slandered Newton by saying that somehow this equation has something to do with Newton when it has Newton opposed it <laughs> so would Descartes and so would Galileo um, this isn't their physics. This isn't how they understood the universe. Uh, so they use these little subtle lies, you know, to pretend it's all okay. And, uh, you know, they just, they, they gloss over the putting the one half in and destroying all their previous proofs. You know, all their, all their evidence that they shove down mankind's throat saying, this is the truth, this is the truth, this is the truth. And then they cut it in half. A gigantic concession that it wasn't the right answer. <sighs> yeah, it's nothing, yeah. I mean, you have NASA being wishy-washy. You know, they just, oh, we just use Newtonian mechanics. Well, what do they mean by that? They're not using Einstein. Well, they're also not using Leibniz. They're also not using De Chardelet. They're also not using your work equation. Because it doesn't get right <laughs> answers. It's not going to land you on the moon. But they won't come out and say it. Just like they won't concede that they have done the Eddington experiment, and they have redone it, and they didn't find what they were looking for. So they didn't say anything. That's probably also a fact that physics just doesn't want to hear. So anyway, I guess I'll leave it at that. I mean, there's nowhere to go with this channel, apparently, because it doesn't matter how well you prove something. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, yeah, I can't pay people to make a counter-argument. I can't pay them to do a reasonable debunk of anything I say. Um, it's just a closed uh, environment. Physics is not open to critique or improvement or any kind of scrutiny. It's a religion period. And they don't want to hear that God might not be in the clouds. And he might not, you know, he might, the, the, the clouds might not be ruby-encrusted. Uh, they just don't want to hear that fact. <sighs>